Here we have an experimental setup where um, two rails are separated by a distance of one meter, and they're also connected on one end by a resistor that is two ohms. And both rails are metal, so they can conduct electricity. Well, on the other hand, you have a metal axle with metal wheels on it, so it can be pulled. And in this case, it is being pulled toward the right along the rail at a speed of 20 meters per second. And within this whole setup, you have the Earth's magnetic field going through this area enclosed by the setup. And it is going down at an angle of 53 degrees uh, below the horizontal. So on the left side, you have a top view. And on the right side, I've drawn a side view so that you can understand the relationship between the magnetic field and the railing system. So when you first look at this question, um, you see that you already have an area enclosed by the rails, the resistor, and the metal axle. And you also have a magnetic field that is penetrating through this area. So hopefully that helps you remember this is talking about magnetic flux. And the formula that you have learned from magnetic flux is B times A times cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Which two vectors? In this case, it is the area vector, which is always perpendicular to the area that you're talking about. So in this case, the area vector is the blue one right here. We don't care as much about the direction. We just care about the fact that it's perpendicular in this case. And in order for us to find the parallel component of the magnetic field to that area vector, it is probably easier to use 37 degrees instead of 53 degrees um, so that you can keep the formula as cosine of the angle instead of using sine of 53 degrees just to keep it more consistent. But really, these are complementary angles. So either one you use will get you to the right answer. Just make sure you match sine and cosine to the correct one. And I want to be consistent with the formula, so I'm going to use cosine of 37 instead of sine of 53. So whatever I have already said so far should give you a clue that we can definitely find magnetic flux. In fact, we can find the magnetic flux in this scenario um, as it changes over time, which will then allow us to find um, the uh, EMF that is induced by this setup. And once you know the induced EMF, you can also use it to find the induced current. And from there, you can actually also find the magnetic force exerted on this current, on the induced current. And from there, you can even calculate power because power can equal to force times velocity. Once you find force, you can also multiply by the velocity to find the power dissipated. So because the question only asks us to find two of the ones that we listed, I am going to find EMF and current. So let's first apply the formula that we know for EMF, a lot of which I had already explained earlier when I was talking about magnetic flux. So EMF is equal to Again, the magnitude of EMF is equal to changing flux over changing time. And since in this case we only have one coil, one loop, my N right here, which I did not write, would be one and it wouldn't change our answer. So I just omitted it for the sake of simplicity. All right, let's now look into this change in magnetic flux. What is really changing is the area that is enclosed by this closed loop, right? As you move the metal axle to the right, you're enlarging the area. So when we write BA cosine of theta, we're really looking at B delta A because the area is the one that is changing times cosine of 37. But we don't really have a number for area, so we need to think about this a little bit deeper. What is area? Well, area is width times height, right? Well, in this case, I'm going to use L to represent the height, and the width X is changing as the metal axle is being pulled to the right. And so I will again specify the um, variable that is changing. In this case, it's actually the uh, the length, which is x, or the width. 
So once you're at this point, hopefully you recognize that change in x over change in time is your velocity. Since in this case it is constant velocity because they didn't say otherwise, um, that is indeed just change in length over change in time. So you can rewrite this whole equation as BLV times cosine of 37. I am now going to plug in all the information that I've been given for all of those variables. B is 5 times 10 to the negative fifth. L is 1 meters. V is 20 meters per second. And cosine of 37. So plugging all of that into your calculator, you should have a rounded number of 8.0 times 10 to the negative fourth volts. Now that you have EMF, which is just another way of saying voltage, you are also able to calculate current because in the problem they gave you a resistor and its resistance. You can use Ohm's law, which is, which is V equals IR. Of course, you can substitute V with EMF and rearranging it to find EMF divided by R, which is your current. Now I'm just going to plug in the value I found for EMF, which is 8.0 times 10 to the negative 4 volts divided by 2, which is the value for resistance, and I have 4.0 times 10 to the negative 4th amps. So there you have the two that you can solve for this question. But I also want to talk about how this question also gives you enough information to come up with the direction of the induced current. So because of the side view, you can see that the parallel component of magnetic force, so this, sorry, magnetic field, this external magnetic field is pointing down. So from the top perspective, it is pointing into the page, which is why I have drawn this symbol right here. So because you have the external magnetic field pointing into the page and you're increasing the area, in other words, you're increasing the flux, the only way, according to Linz's law, that you can counter this increase is to have an induced magnetic field that points in the opposite direction. So you weaken the increase a little bit. Um, so once you have this induced magnetic field that points out of the page, you're going to use the right hand rule to then find the direction of the induced current. And if you wrap your fingers around the loop, um, you will find that the induced current is actually going in the counterclockwise direction. And that's how you can solve this question.